we carry with us 90 years of history. It's in the hours we work and the time we have off. It's in the pay we get and the retirement we've earned. There's history in the coats on our backs, in the equipment we use, and even in the air that we breathe. Because every piece of gear we have, every benefit we enjoy, was won for us by our brothers and sisters brave enough to stand together and fight like no other union in North America and to secure for each of us a better future. In the 1900s, firefighters controlled the fastest teams of horses. They knew the power and the danger of steam pumpers. They endured the hardship of the fire line and put up with the life of continuous duty schedules. But when political hacks threatened to sack experienced firefighters and hand out firehouse jobs to loyal cronies, Professional firefighters said, enough. The city was Pittsburgh, the year 1903. In time, its firefighters would be IAFF Local 1. Though some firefighter unions were well established in major cities like New York, across Canada and the United States, a new sense of unity was growing, helped by the newly formed American Federation of Labor. Firefighter organizations from big cities, Chicago, Vancouver, Seattle, Cleveland and Hamilton, and small towns, Great Falls, Sioux City, Little Rock and Schenectady, independently affiliated with the AFL. And in 1917, when firefighters in Tacoma, Washington, after years of always being on duty, finally won a two platoon schedule, they said they felt like they'd been let out of jail. Their union strength broke the backs of the city politicians. Six months later, on February 28, 1918, delegates from two dozen U.S. and Canadian firefighter locals, at the invitation of AFL President Samuel Gompers, met in Washington, D.C. to form the IAFF, the International Association of Firefighters. IAFF local numbers were assigned in the order in which each had affiliated with the AFL. The first two locals had joined the same day. They flipped a coin. Pittsburgh became IAFF Local 1 and Chicago IAFF Local 2. Professional firefighters had common goals. Live and work with dignity, with care for their safety and concern for their families. By the time our charter was presented, 59 locals had joined, and by the end of the first year, there were 149. Organizing was not easy. Anti-union business and political interests preyed on public fears of socialism and anarchy, banning and breaking some IAFF locals. Many men suffered departmental persecution, demotion, and even discharge when they dared to stand up for the cause of unionism. But every fire department that organized with the IAFF noted a significant increase in firefighter morale and in operating efficiency. World War I ended, and out of that horror came new ideas and new inventions that could help firefighters work better and safer. Mechanical engines and pneumatic tires meant quicker, better response, lowering the loss of life and property. But even in the prosperity of the Roaring Twenties, local governments were slow to accept change. Two platoon system firefighters often worked over 80 hours a week. In 1921, the IAFF joined with other unions to form a permanent AFL Legislative Council they knew political decisions affected their jobs. By 1924, most firefighters in Canadian provinces were successful in negotiating hours of work and pensions. 
Then came the Great Depression. Employers had a take-it-or-leave-it posture toward pay and even safety. During the Depression, the IAFF spirit of community service shone through. As firefighters organized sunshine divisions, bringing food and clothing to those in need. And there were innovations. Two-way radios meant better control, and improved breathing equipment meant better protection for firefighters as they went into burning buildings to save a life or fight the fire. And we made political gains. Defined benefit plans were won by many of our locals, such as Chicago, where the Fireman's Annuity and Benefit Fund of Chicago was established in 1931. Under defined benefit plans, cities were required to make guaranteed contributions, which kept money out of the hands of hungry politicians and kept benefits in the pockets of firefighters. Franklin D. Roosevelt's New Deal brought real job protections. Civil service laws shortened work hours and raised pay. Labor laws protected workers and their right to organize. But firefighters had no collective bargaining power to negotiate and enforce contracts. It would take 30 years to fight and win collective bargaining. And even then, it would be on a state-by-state -state basis. Because of the dangers of the job, the IAFF pioneered medical research into heart and lung disease. In 1935, our union assisted Pennsylvania locals in winning the first Officer Disability Benefit Heart and Lung Act. 1939, with Nazi troops occupying the European continent, bombs rained on Great Britain. Hundreds of our members joined the Canadian Firefighters Corps and went to England to fight the fires from Hitler's bombers. When the United States was attacked at Pearl Harbor, Congress declared war, and IAFF members proudly joined and fought with their allied brothers. For the first time, federal firefighter locals, eight of them, organized with the IAFF. Some cities used the war against firefighters. They argued that firefighters had the right to organize, but a wartime strike would be nothing less than a treasonous conspiracy against the government victory. When the war ended, those who came back found fire service jobs waiting for them, even disabled veterans, all because of our union. In 1948, the IAFF was 1,000 locals strong. A great union is more than just numbers. And as the IAFF grew, so did our service to firefighters and our communities. In 1954, we adopted the Muscular Dystrophy Association as our charity in the United States and Canada. Since then, we've raised nearly $325 million to help Jerry's kids through research and treatment. The dangers of the job are well known because this union has led the investigations into the occupational hazards of firefighting. In 1958, we formed the IAFF John P. Redmond Foundation that established a medical library to assist locals in the presentation of disability and pension cases. In 1960, IAFF delegates supported a resolution calling for a 35-hour duty week and this work paid off as we began to win shorter duty hours in many areas of the U.S. and Canada. We choose to go to the moon. Our profession was also shaped by social and political change. What we learned about saving lives on the battlefield, we brought to civilians on the street. Victims of accidents, trauma, and cardiac arrest, once doomed to death in a ditch, were literally given back their lives by firefighters. We're going to take you to the hospital real quick, okay? Our communities received the same rapid response from specially trained firefighter EMTs and paramedics for medical emergencies as they had received for fire suppression. 
On the political front, from state to state, firefighters were fighting for collective bargaining and winning. First in the states of Washington and New York, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Massachusetts, and Iowa would soon follow. Nationally, the IAFF scored a major legislative victory in 1968 with passage of the Federal Fire Research Act. The law focused attention on fire safety problems and led to establishment of the National Fire Academy. And four years after the first maple leaf flew above Parliament, the IAFF opened its office in Ottawa for IAFF members throughout Canada. Our union was growing in strength and numbers. By 1968, we totaled 130,000 members in 1,300 locals. Just four years later, over 158,000 belonged to the IAFF. We knew that our members' lives and livelihoods could be changed by the actions of government. And we stepped up our political activity, creating Fire Pack to represent firefighter issues in federal, state, and provincial political arenas. When U.S. President Gerald Ford signed the Public Safety Officers Benefits Act, we had won an eight-year battle to help families of firefighters killed in the line of duty. But our concern didn't end there. In 1977, we established McLennan Scholarships that would help with the costs of higher education for the children of firefighters who had been killed in the line of duty. The IAFF at 60 was a force for change, a good neighbor in the communities we serve and a powerful advocate in the realm of politics. Live and work and retire with dignity. On any given day, this union is fighting the battles to win or protect firefighter benefits. In 1979, the IAFF won legislation that created IRS Code 457, which established deferred compensation plans for firefighters. Participation in these plans provides firefighters supplemental income at retirement. Once again, recognizing that jobs and politics go hand in hand, in 1980, the IAFF held its first annual legislative conference. The research and guidance of the IAFF led national associations and federal, state, and provincial agencies to write and enforce standards that protect firefighters, including fire brigade organization, training, and better turnout gear. We were the driving force in the development and use of pass alarms. This simple warning device has helped us save firefighter lives on the fire ground every day since. By the early 80s, most state associations had already won heart and lung presumption laws. And in 1982, California became the first state in the U.S. to have a cancer presumption law because the IAFF and the California Professional Firefighters won its passage. Prior to 1985, there was no federal standard or requirement that firefighters had to receive overtime for extended work hours. That year, the Supreme Court ruled that the Federal Fair Labor Standards Act applied to state and local municipal employees. In response, the IAFF worked to pass FLSA amendments requiring overtime for IAFF members. 1986 brought passage of U.S. federal and state laws that protected us from the risk of exposure to hazardous materials. Firefighters now had the right to know what was stored or carried that could harm the public. In 1987, we established the IAFF Human Relations Committee to create dialogue within our ranks on the issues that impact and reflect the diversity of our membership. And we pushed for a comprehensive safety and health standard for firefighters in NFPA 1500. And we won funding for training and equipment to reduce uncontrolled risk of toxic exposures that had already injured or killed many of our brothers and sisters. Every year since 1985, we have honored the memory of those brothers and sisters who have made the ultimate sacrifice at the IAFF Fallen Firefighter Memorial 
in Colorado Springs. In May 1991, the first Canadian legislative conference met to discuss the need for PSOB laws for our 20,000 members. In 1996, the IAFF began the Wellness Fitness Initiative. The program includes confidential medical, fitness, and behavioral health evaluations and provides for rehabilitation. The candidate physical ability test is now used by over 700 fire departments and the Peer Fitness Trainer Program has certified over 4,000 IAFF members as PFTs. Often in our profession, unthinkable tragedies have been the catalyst for historic gains. The 21st century began a momentous decade in which our union would advance further than ever before. Our union has championed national industry standards for on-scene operations, including adequate staffing to assure safe, efficient, and effective operations, and to protect firefighter lives. And when compromises in standards threatened the lives of our members, we stood our ground and won. The terrorist attacks that brought down the Twin Towers changed our job forever. The IAFF responded the same day at the Pentagon and was at Ground Zero, supporting the members of Locals 94, 854, and I-26, and their families, who lost 347 in the line of duty. We distributed more than $162 million to the families of those killed. We will never forget. Since 9-11, we have strengthened our presence in the halls and offices of the U.S. Congress, the Canadian Parliament, and state and provincial legislatures, fighting for and winning laws to protect those on the job. As we investigated firefighter fatalities, it became clear that inadequate staffing was a factor in line of duty injuries and deaths. Through our efforts, Congress continued to support the FIRE Act and passed the SAFER Act, making federal grants to increase staffing by 75,000 new firefighters. In Canada, the IAFF won funding for hazmat and terrorist incident response training programs and fought for pension reform and presumptive disease legislation. Through the HEROES Project, the IAFF is the driving force behind the development of clothing and equipment that will protect firefighters in the 21st century. When more than 200 locals felt the impact of Hurricanes Katrina, Rita, and Wilma, our union provided direct and immediate help to IAFF members. And we continue to fight local, state, and federal battles to help members rebuild their departments and their lives. And in the political arena, today our members across Canada and the United States are benefiting from the influence of our gold and black IAFF Firefighters 4 brand, which is sought by candidates at all levels regardless of their political party. FirePAC and FirePAC Canada are now among the largest political action funds in North America making our union one of the most powerful political operations, fighting and winning for our members. Today, the IAFF is over 290,000 members strong, organized in 3,100 affiliates, and representing more than 85% of the full-time professional firefighters and paramedics in North America. We honor our history, and we honor the men and women who sacrificed to make life better, safer, and more rewarding for IAFF members and our families. After 90 years of service, the IAFF will continue to fight 
and win wherever and whenever our members need the strength of our union.